Hey, how are you all doing? Um, I guess I'll wait a minute or two to let the people stroll in. Um, I actually got a whole bunch of responses to this. Um, so yeah, let me see. Nineteen people said they were going to show up to this, so um, pretty excited about that. All right. All right. How's everyone doing today? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm busy, but a good, but a good kind of busy. So yeah, I haven't even eaten breakfast yet. So that's my kind of busy. <laughs> Brian, it's Potchki Day here in Chicago. Pookie, woo! <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Carolyn, it's <that> Tuesday, man. <laughs> I don't even know what those words mean. So <sighs> they're like magical, like pastries that so, uh, all like the Polish. Uh, like yeah. places have today. Like I'd never heard of them until I moved up here, so don't feel bad. They're yummy. Uh, I'm so jealous. I moved from Chicago to Texas uh, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my uh, spouse just got back from Kroger, and they're like putting together like 12 packs for people. It's pretty wild. All right. So we got we got we got some 12 people here now. So that is mm -hmm. over half mm -hmm. the people that said they were going to come. So. Let's get this kicked off. So I am Brian Lyles, and I see that my one of my other co-chairs is here. Alice, how you doing? Hey, hi everyone. And what we're the goal here today is um, to let's create a work group for air-gapped workloads. And um, I only have a couple things to say. One is um, I'm not going to lead this. Uh, <laughs> we're going to find someone else to lead this. And that's actually, that's like one of the, the, the biggest things, like, you know, we got, we got, got a lot of other things going on right now, but I am super interested in making sure this gets going. So we want to find out, um, we need to find someone to lead this effort. And then two, we need to figure out, all right, you know, people are interested in air gaps, but we need to figure out um, what we're going to do. This is a work group. So hopefully there will be work coming out of this. So we need to figure out what that work will be. And we need to track it and then make sure that it gets reported back so everyone can bask in the, the goodness that will come out of this. So um, I'm actually, uh, don't have much more to say in, in this. I am interested in, the, in, in what comes out of this, but um, like I said, I am here as a participant and we need to work on um, figuring out how we're going to get someone to, to lead this effort. Um, Alice, do you have any suggestions or? So boringly done, I'm not even joking you. Nice. Yeah, so I think it's, it really depends on the people here. So I, I agree, we, we see ourselves here more as the facilitators to enable this and to communicate it with TOC. So I think it, as it's a work group, I think actually people working on air gapped environments and have already good understanding of what is needed and what should be done would be good candidates. Yeah, as someone whose organization is just starting to uh, head into this, um, this, this quarter and next quarter and, and the year to come, I definitely need to hear from others with experience in this area, especially around the uh, context of CNCF tooling and everything in between. So um, definitely looking for somebody with, with some prior knowledge to, to lead this. All right, and, and here's the best part. Um, as with, I mean, this comes with a little bit of, um, of, of time and um, it doesn't have to be one person. What I'm looking for is maybe one or two or possibly three people to to help lead this up. I know, put everyone on the spot. Everyone wants to come and 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 get all the goodness. 
I mean, if not, you know, then either Alice I, or I will have to at least take it from now, and then we will um, work on getting someone else. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want that to uh, stop us from one of the actually one of the bigger things is um, on the mailing list a little bit ago. Alice actually talked about um, doing this whole work group, and we got a lot of good feedback and, and people who want to be interested or who want to be involved. Um, maybe we should go around and while we do this, I will get some notes started. Um, what, what are we looking for here? Because I, because I think that, um, I mean, what I think of as air gapped, um, and just in my, my situation is, um, uh, I have a Kubernetes cluster that is not connected to anything. And, and, you know, that's very vague because I'm thinking of it in a very vague way. Um, what do I expect to work? What do I expect not to work? and what could be approved. Yeah, just that we don't have like that long moment of silence. <laughs> uh, that was also the outcome of, uh, of KubeCon where we had this discussion. That was exactly also, also the idea for a working group is to have actually something to work on. And that was the big question. Okay, I like, like this nice internet connected Kubernetes environments, but what if I have to ship a Kubernetes and also my applications, and I'm not connected to the internet. I'm not connected to a public registry. I really have to run everything on the spot. How do I do this? Which I think would be a good target for the working group, figuring out a best practice on how to do this from tools and what people are using. Yeah, don't talk too fast. I'm creating this document. And I can, <laughs> if you want to say the link, but I think we're on the same page. It's really, have a Kubernetes environment. It's not connected to the internet. You have to manage obviously Kubernetes as the infrastructure, plus also deploy applications there. So I guess I can chime in. Uh, so we've been running air gaps for quite a while now. Um, and one of the biggest issues we run into, and one of the things I would love to find is good tooling for determining even the artifacts I need to provide, um, especially with the explosion of operators, it's getting more and more difficult to determine the, the artifacts, the Docker images that we need to actually serve up. Um, so it's a lot of testing in an online mode to figure out, oh, these are the actual artifacts being pulled in. Um, so I think that would be a good, or what I would hope to get out of this is tooling to help me, I guess, better determine that. I can go next. We're running um, Kubernetes uh, in com like a commercial environment. So it's on AWS, but we're also running it in fairly regulated and constrained um, AWS gov environments. So they're not like truly air gapped, but for all in extents and purposes, they are because we have to go through a really, really rigorous process to move things from commercial into that environment in terms of like moving images into private registries uh, through a process, um, how we get uh, any kind of operational control in, um, how we upgrade components for Kubernetes, uh, how we treat the life cycle of those applications. Um, so I'm super interested in this space still, uh, just trying to figure out how we best manage. We have a whole bunch of things that we've written, a whole bunch of things we're using to do that, but how we actually make a best practice out of that. All right, can, um, one can second here. Me. I'm gonna, oh, never mind. go ahead. So, hey, everybody, I'm Chris Short. I work at Red Hat. Uh, we do a lot of uh, disconnected and air-gapped installs for like US government type folks like on-premises. So they have, and like just talking to these customers, like I feel their pain. Um, I was in the intelligence community and communications community for the Air Force uh, in a previous life. So I completely understand what they're going through and trying to have these completely disjointed and disconnected environments, but also like you have these disconnected environments where there might not be, but like one internet terminal for like an entire facility. So like getting that piece figured out and as like encapsulated as possible, I think is good here. I know at Red Hat, we have a lot of documentation on this and like working with like Jeremy and others, I think we can come up with a really good best practice in that regard. All right, um, thank you, Chris. Um, I put up a document um, I'm actually unsure how to share this thing. Um, can't share it to a mailing list. So um, I just posted a link and we'll need to figure out the, the sharing for this, but at least we have a document now. Where did you post this link? Yeah, where do you post this link? Oh, I put, oh, I put it in, I'll post it here. I put it in Slack, but I'll put it here too. There you go.
Jeremy, Rickard, anything from you? I can go next. This is Ashish. Oh, okay. um, so we operate on a heavily regulated environment um, where we have Kubernetes clusters running in, but as some of the previous pe people mentioned, like everything is proxied through uh, like upstream proxies for us to do installations, which makes it extremely difficult for us to package and ship an application because if you have a dependency which is um, not available through an existing proxy, it probably takes weeks for us to wire up all those information, proxies, firewalls, and all those things in order to get it deployed. Um, the second part of the trouble that we have is when we ship some of those things, um, we know that you know we tested it on our side and we validated it, but um, from an end user standpoint, they may be looking for some attestation or some sort of a validation on those um, particular images. Um, so how do we validate something that I checked in my environment on that specific deployment side and then confirm that you know this is same as what she shipped. So those are two of the challenges that we have uh, with the air gaps, I mean primary challenges I would say. Yeah, so I'll go back. Um, I think I mentioned that we're doing things, uh, you know, mo we, we run clusters in the commercial environment and in the, pro the kind of more restricted government environment. We definitely have that attestation need um, we have to verify that like the things we're shipping across this gap are what we tested and ran in um, the commercial environment. And we also have to have um, like a receipt. So it's got the transaction lists for all the, for everything we've put through this kind of gateway or diode thing. Um, we have to have a list of the transaction IDs associated with each one of those things. And uh, like one of the problems we've run into is that we've, we either miss those transaction IDs or somebody has pushed twice because uh, there is some automation that kind of drives through this process, um, but it's, it's kind of broken. Um, and then getting on the other side, we've missed a certain image or like we don't have a good, right now we don't have a good story for like what's the manifest for everything that makes up this application. Um, what's the, uh, the contents of, you know, running service X. It may have four or five containers. How do we make sure we get all, all of those things across at the same time? Um, we're, we're going through this like FedRAMP high audit right now. And uh, part of that has been fixing up images and making sure that we don't have vulnerabilities in, in certain things. And we missed uh, certain versions of, of uh, containers that ran in that application. So we, we went through this fire drill this weekend, like, oh, crap, we have vulnerabilities still. What happened? And it turns out we didn't actually ship across version X or version X plus one of certain, uh, certain things because we don't have a, a unified manifest or definition of what, what that application is. Yeah, I think these, the, what we should really try to get into this document is like really all those questions and problems we have in a semi-structured format. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing what I heard is we have, I think even different definitions of air gap. I don't want it like to be a definition working group, but we have totally disconnected. We have regulated via proxies and we have, we can download it from the internet, but then have to transfer it over. I don't know why it makes a lot of difference for the different use cases. I think it would be good to start like for the, the air gap environment that everybody uses, what does your environment actually look like? And then we have specific use cases. Obviously we have to deploy Kubernetes there somehow, which is uh, ideally something we can more easily handle than how we ship an, uh, an application, which problems that we run into. I think if you have the full list there, then we can more or less, as it's a working group, like really work from top to bottom, where, where do we run into, where do we have input? Because eventually the, the, the outcome of this should then also be a report back to the TOC and maybe a report back to other working groups where we've, for example, or, or, or other uh, projects or the, the Kubernetes project if we need something. Right, can we take it? Go ahead. Could we take an iterative approach to this? Because I feel like the, the disconnected install like or disconnected environment kind of goes the gamut, right? Like you have some level of disconnection and then it goes to like full disconnection right like there's a spectrum here so i feel like you can iteratively do this like peeling yeah. away peeling away things that you don't have access to right like if you don't have access to x you need to do y if you don't have access to z you need to do w for example right like so forth so on yeah i, I kind of like that approach of having a, more like a cookbook of like how you address certain restrictions 
Do you yeah. have Do you have the full Sorry. like DoD intelligence community? Uh, I have to burn everything to a USB or to a CD and like send mm-hmm. that on an airplane somewhere. Or mm-hmm. do I? Uh, People laugh, but that happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah, like, all the time. Like, oh, like Chris, that was my previous life um, a long time ago. And like deploying stuff to other countries is not easy when you have no network connectivity. Right. So what I'm hearing, Jeremy, and maybe this is this is um, distilling down on on what some of the artifacts that might be created are. Is um, maybe it does start off as a cookbook, and and you know with with like the old O'Reilly style, I think they did a great good job with that. You know, identify situation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. give some words there. And, and then, you know, if we get that right, then the next step could be actually um, implementing some of those ideas and automating some of those ideas and making that available as, as tools. Um, so that, that's a, that's a, I think that's a, a very um, same way for us to be, uh, at least my point of view. And it feels like there's a couple of different ways to tackle this as well in terms of like part of the concern, at least my part of the concern is really the Kubernetes installation part being totally mm-hmm. air-gapped, right? And then there's also, all right, here's the stuff that user X is running on top that has to also be, you know, coming from internal registries or whatever, right? Um, and so at least for me, yeah, I'm, I'm far more concerned with the installation part because as, you know, Talos is... We just have users that are, you know, have European government clients essentially that are trying to do totally offline installs, right? So, yeah. if we can get that working, you know, that's hands off for me at that point. But yeah, I mean, yeah, there's the, definitely kind of two parts to it. It seems like that, that's definitely like, I think the best way to focus on this is multi-directional, right? Like come from it from both angles, complete mm-hmm. disconnected, and then some level of disconnection. Yeah, like, our, both for- groups have that. Yeah, exactly. Our, for instance, our, our, our concerns aren't necessarily around the bootstrapping of the environment. Like, uh, we're, we're in a, uh, we're, we're working on a lower level of, of, uh, FedRAMP, um, right now. So like initial bootstrapping of the Kubernetes cluster and some of the infrastructure like image registries, et cetera, isn't, isn't in scope, but the day-to-day operationalizing of, uh, deploying to that target is more in scope for us right now. So. Yeah, and so I, I think we're kind of saying the same thing, or at least that's mm-hmm. what I'm hearing, some reoccurring patterns. And, um, you know, what do we actually have power to change or do, you know, as a CNCF working group? And I would love to see the outcome of this be almost a set of guidelines for if you're a CNCF governed project or product, here's how you do some of the air gapped installations as you start to peel away those layers. Now, it doesn't have to be your first how to hello world readme doc. But as you start looking at some of these CNCF products, it'd be great if that was almost a requirement or a friendly nudge <laughs> to, to cover the air gap mm-hmm. installs uh, as part of being a CNCF umbrella piece. You know, I, I think one of my biggest struggles, and I think Spencer might have touched on this or Ryan, I'm not sure, is images are everywhere. And a lot of times the manifests are pulling from a specific publicly available registry. Now there's tools out there, Helm, Customize, and things like that that solve it. But it'd be great if this came packaged in with the delivery mechanism of said application. You know, here's how you deploy it using it from a different image repository, using whatever tool they want, or some form of example that can be built on top of. Um, so the deliverable becomes more of a, a friendly nudge or, or a guidelines around what CNCF governed projects look like, and you know what would be best practices for air gap installations, whatever air gap means to you, you know, to whatever flavor that means. And I think that those are actionable things that you could take away and, and apply to the uh, community within our control, I think. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Chris. So John Roach in chat, I don't think he's on voice. Um, he mentioned that it might be easier to start at, for this group, like how to install Kate's in a disconnected environment, right? Like just get it up and running. What, what level of disconnectedness? And like that would be the output initially of us like doing this work. And then we can iterate on top of that. Just wanted to make sure he was heard. That's it. No, I mean that's that's a good point, and you can't do everything at once. And is is there consensus? Oh, is there consensus around that? I mean, does anyone object to to that approach to begin with? I don't think it's it's a good idea to start with Kubernetes first because it doesn't make sense to talk about running applications on something that they couldn't install in the first place. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that is a, I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to whittle down to something 
mm -hmm. where hey this is what we can we can um actually rally or rally around and um still looking for uh i will ping again but still looking for um someone else to to run this meeting and and then decide you know um how often would you want to meet is it um, we're meeting today on on this Tuesday, and I just picked it because it worked for me. To tell you all the truth, this is just this time worked for me. Um, but um, going forward, you know, what's the cadence that you would like to meet at? Um, I'd probably suggest something every couple of weeks, just because of um, there's a lot of meetings out there. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then start figuring out how how the coordination is going to work. Is it going to happen? Are you is it happening in a repo or is it a doc? Is it a Google Doc that just gets started with? I think that's the lowest amount of friction for me. I would just say, ask my Google Doc, and, and and start typing in there, and then, and then the group, whoever it is, can can start working on that. Yeah. So I'm just. Hey Brian, just did still, you see that Jeremy just volunteered his tribute to help lead? All right. So now we have two people. All right. I think that's you know that's a that's a good start. Um, I will not press on that anymore. So thank you, Jeremy, and. Thank you, Ryan, who pinged me separately. Um, unless there's any dissension here. If there's no dissension, we will move on with this. All right, um, gaveled. Let's move on. Uh, I would just do one more thing that we could trigger, um, Brian. We should. We know we have, actually, because we talked a lot about FedRAMP, we have a lot of end users in the end user community in the CNCF from government organizations. Mm -hmm. And they might just not know that we're working about this right now. So right. I'm like the US Air Force and a couple of others who are actively. I can reach out to Nicholas yeah. uh, Shillian if you want. Oh, you might know them as well. So they just know this exists. Mm -hmm. This was one group. The other one that initially started this discussion was the, uh, the telco working group simply because they deployed to telco hardware. Mm -hmm. So we, we can just ping these two. So if, if you already know people, do it, but we can also route it via Amy. Hey, can you connect us to the right people that this actually exists? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Have Amy connect us to as many people in the uh, end user community that might have good input for this. I think there's probably a lot of people that are doing this stuff that don't necessarily participate in meetings like this all the time or watch um, mailing lists. <clears throat> And it would be uh, good to kind of reach out and proactively try to get them involved. Oh yeah, definitely. And we also have the Federal Reserve here, so that's already great, so. There's also a research users group for CNCF, which is largely academics um, that are doing like HPC type things. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them also have some form of air gapped disconnected, which I think would be good to reach out to them. Yeah, so. Uh, I think this is something that where, where we can help also as the, the, the six chairs to help with this with if you jump in like working on that document to connect to the right people and get them involved here. All right, sounds good. Uh, all right, um, let's see here. So I guess um, between um, Ryan and and Jeremy, now this is your show. It's no longer, you know, I can not say anything else for the rest of this call. Um, as you all can see, I'm a professional delegator. This is my job to delegate, and and in the CNCF and in, at VMware is all I do. So, uh, what we'll do, and and actually, I don't know if unless you all want to talk more today. Um, I'll be here for the entire time, but um, this is really, this is Jeremy and, and Ryan, this is your show now. And um, Allison here and I are here and, um, and Harry are here to support you in whatever way we can. Awesome. So I, I think I like the approach of starting with how we deploy Kubernetes in an air gap environment. Um, we should just start a Google doc and we can start kind of capturing ideas in there and then uh, once we have some content, we can add some structure to it and refactor it a little bit. Um, is everybody in the uh, the SIG app delivery channel on Slack? Is that the best place to communicate? I see Chris just joined. Always 
always hesitate saying like Slack is the primary way of communicating. Do we want another mailing list? The regular? I, yeah. Or do we want the regular mailing list? I mean, yeah, like, it's not that much traffic on one. it. Nah. Yeah, let's just use the regular one. And because it's not much traffic on that list. Now we'll use it. So actually, there's more people subscribed than we know about because we really, there's way more people usually replying to an email than we see either on Slack or in any of the meetings. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. using the mailing list is the best starting point. So they could, this is the first thing we want to work on. You will see that you will get create more engagement out of this. All right. So um, uh, I don't want to put um, Brian and, and and Jeremy on the on the spot. Um, so we need to give them a, a chance to, to to get themselves together. So. Um, Anything else that anyone wanted to bring up that, that we did not bring up to at least get started? Is anybody just, uh, maybe this is a little early for this, but has anybody discussed how CNAB might fit into this picture? Or is, I mean, that's a pretty big subject, obviously, but we're thinking very, we're leaning very heavily into, into CNAB and thinking in that direction. And one of the things we're trying to keep in mind is that we might be able to use lean on the spec to help us realize like what one manifest or artifact might look like to be to be shipped air, uh, in an air gap manner. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that was something worth bringing up. Yeah. Uh, so Carolyn and I both work on CNAB and uh, we were the authors of a tool called Porter that does CNAB stuff. Um, I think it definitely it has a place in the as a solution that people can take a look at. Um, whether it's appropriate for every situation or not, I think uh, has some debate still. I think uh, we learned some things regarding air gaps from working on CNAB. Um, the, uh, when we get into like the security and attestation piece of that, I think there's a, we, we kind of settled on like three definitions of what air gap meant in that situation. You know, like whether it's you have uh, no connectivity at all, whether you have some limited connectivity. And a lot of that drove the tooling um, piece like notary for example had some ties like some need to have like references back to original signing keys and things and like how do you ship those across a completely air gap network and not an air gap network i think um we found that uh like from just the manifest piece and like what the bundle looks like i think that's a pretty decent stab at like listing out images um that you need uh so I think it's a it's definitely a thing to look at and has opportunity to uh, address some of your needs. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell CNAB as like the solution, but yeah, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of tools in this space. And oh, for sure. I think it's like CNAB might be a great solution. Don't get me wrong, right? Like, but I think it'd be more important to focus on um, not necessarily like high level, but like more process and yeah. more expectations and not necessarily like tools, if that makes sense. So yep. um, Jeremy knows this already because he saw this two weeks ago. Um, I looked at what CNAB did and I said, ah, you know, this is some good ideas, but um, I want to solve the problem of image re relocation just in general. Assuming you have a cluster, it's there by magic. Right. And you want it to, you, you had a set of manifest and you want to just take those manifests, figure out what images were involved package that thing up in the tarball, ship it over, USB, um, CD, DVD, does not matter. And then when you expand it on the other side, um, you could automatically get uh, the, you could automatically rewrite your YAML even before it was hit into the cluster and it would, it would fix all the images. And um, I'm calling this thing Chief and I could talk about it because it's almost done being open source at VMware. Um, uh, I'm, I, I, don't understand the problem. So I, when I don't understand problems, I write code and um, I will be sharing this with this group. And, and it was just to solve that problem. I have, I have manifest and they, re, and they talk to images and I want to move them somewhere else. But that led into like a thousand other problems where you realize where 99% um, of everything is in a pod spec template. You can find images, but people use things like um, for arguments, they actually just hard code the image right in the argument. And now you get to the place where if we had a great convention for um, specifying images in a config map, 
then any tool could guess. So mm -hmm. I'm, and actually, and funny enough, on our VMware Slack, I threw that bomb to our Knative team this, this morning, and it's now it's spawned off this huge amount of meetings. And yes, um, goodness was ha happened there. But um, I would like to talk about this because we can't be the only people that are having this problem. Everyone is going to run into this, and and I would like to see other solutions. Mine's a POC. I just wrote it in a in a weekend to say, hey, I think this could happen. But I would like to see. Um, not only tools in this, but exploration of conventions too, yeah. because there's things that we can do. And then ultimately, um, I mean, ultimately we wish that Kubernetes could support this, like Kubernetes actually, if Kubernetes supported image relocation out of the box, we wouldn't even be mm -hmm. having these conversations. Right. right. But cool. um, what would we actually say and how could we actually spearhead that um, or tell or work with someone to spearhead that effort? Um, it would take two years. I swear it would take two years to get it done, but um, let's see if we can get that done too. And that, that's a that's a weird place for this group because we're CNCF and not Kubernetes, but at least we can we could formulate a, a good want in that space. Like this is where we would like to end up. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and like, yeah, you can, exactly. Like uh, coalescing on a, on a standard first, or at least a convention first, I think is a good first step for getting the idea to spread uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, I like this. So one of the main issues we ran into with the, the image thing that you were discussing, Brian, and I don't know, I guess the full implementation, but, um, you know, when you do that, sometimes you lose some of the signing and you can't validate that it, you know, came from uh, upstream. Uh, and so what we've actually done, um, which we've found quite a little, lot of success with, we've switched to the Containerd CRI mm -hmm. and they allow much better proxying to upstream. So we just proxy every single possible upstream uh, uh, URL uh, into our own. And then we validate the keys uh, separately. It's kind of, it's not great from a, a signing perspective, but it, it's allowed us to not have to worry about re-imaging and tagging uh, uh, images to meet our uh, internal um, registries. And it's far better than Docker's approach, so. That's cool. Yeah, that actually is cool. <laughs> I have to do that. Yeah, and I think we also have a list like of everything that people already worked on and did like as a silly, well, as a collection of things we should eventually be discussing i think we have a lot of like, i think if you go over that, that recording again you will find a lot of things that we eventually want to discuss i think it's good that we have a point to start somewhere uh but because it also shows it's like significant work because eventually uh well there's a dedicated session at kubecon on air gapped environments we do have a session on app delivery work and it would be good to dedicate at least some parts okay this is what we're going to do around air gap there yeah, that would be great. And and then there's great exposure in video. So mm -hmm. it would be good to get that message out. And keep in mind, I scheduled this for 50 minutes because I was not sure what we were going to talk about. So you don't don't feel that you have to expand it to the 50 minutes. Um, uh, but uh, Jeremy and Ryan, um, if you need some and um, help getting things going. Um, Alice and Harry and myself are here to help you and you can definitely lean on us for whatever else you need to. And, and then we're, we're still trying to figure out um, how, how we work with TOC too. So uh, this will yeah. be, be learning for everybody. And you also have, uh, if, if you have questions and you want to bring them up, there is a, uh, a meeting that uh, Brian, Harry, and I have like on, on Mondays where we discuss more or less the organizational chair-ish type of stuff. And usually we, we don't have that much to discuss right now because most of our work is actually going into the working groups. So if you need some discussions around bootstrapping for, for this more organizational point, I think we can also invite you to these meetings as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I think then we're done i think nobody I think else done. Is anything like that. <laughs> no i mean let's yeah i think we're done but if anyone else has something to say send it to the mailing list there we go yes. and, and and i just want to say thank you ryan yeah. thank you jeremy um thank you for letting us take your time for no pay thank you for putting this together we thought we were the only air gap people for a long time so <laughs> <laughs> oh no all right real cool then all right everyone um we have a meeting was it next week for the main, um, it'd be nice if we could report, we'll definitely report on the status of this. So 
Um, yeah, cool. Good point. We put it on the agenda, and we have Jeremy or Ryan to to talk about what you're going to work on. So it shouldn't be our. Yep. Great. Alrighty. Awesome. Um, see you all next week. Yeah. Bye. Thank everybody. you, everyone. Thanks. Sure. See you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.